Uh, hi, I'm Mike Lan, and I'm the member of the Knights of Columbus of Rutland, and I welcome you to the show today. And I'm Elijah Lachance, Grand Knight of the Rutland Council of the Knights of Columbus. In a moment, you're going to see a documentary on the life and legacy of our founder, the Venerable Father Michael J. McGivney, who's going to be beatified on October 31st. We hope you enjoy it. The Knights of Columbus continue Father McGivney's legacy today. There are councils in Rutland, Fairhaven, Bennington, and Manchester, and we have a presence in nearly every Catholic church in Vermont. In the last two years, to name just some of our activities in our local area, we've donated an ultrasound machine to First Step Pregnancy Center, supported local food shelves, granted scholarships to college students and seminarians, fed and clothed children and the homeless, volunteered with the elderly, and donated over $60,000 to our local Catholic schools. In the coming months, we plan on distributing bags of supplies to the homeless and donating a washer and dryer to our veterans in need at Dodge House. So the values of the Knights of Columbus are charity, unity, fraternity, and patriotism. This is who we are, and if you're a man, at least 18 years of age, and a practical Catholic, we encourage you to join the Knights of Columbus. You can join and learn more at thenightsofcolumbus.org, kfc.org. You can contact us in Rutland at the kfcrutland at gmail.com. Or you can ask about us at your local Catholic church, and we welcome you to find a night and do so. There will be more information on how to join at the end of this program. We hope you enjoy Father McGivney, an American, blessed, and remember, you are born a man, you become a knight. Father McGivney was a parish priest who died during the Asian flu pandemic before reaching the age of 40. He began his signature accomplishment of founding the Knights of Columbus when he was still in his 20s. In many ways, he was a priest ahead of his time. His vision for the relationship between laity and clergy anticipated the Second Vatican Council by nearly a century, and his desire to keep men Catholic guided his founding of the Knights of Columbus and his conviction that Catholics in America could be both faithful to their church and good citizens, help Catholics claim their place in American society. Over the years, Father McGivney has been honored with many titles, the model parish priest, a good Samaritan, protector of widows and orphans, apostle of Christian family life, and of course, founder of the Knights of Columbus. However, his witness goes beyond titles. He was above all, a testament to the power of spiritual brotherhood and charity. Father McGivney's father and his mother were both immigrants from Ireland. They were both potato famine migrants. But uh, most Irish ended up in cities working in some, some form of factory work. Father McGivney's father ended up in uh, Waterbury, Connecticut, and he was a molder in a brass factory. Catholics in general, Irish Catholics in particular, they were at the very bottom of the social ladder. They were the ones from the poorest country coming without much of education, without a lot of skills. And because of that, they were discriminated against in many facets of life. At the time of Father McGivney, there was, in many ways, great opposition to the Catholic faith. There was a thinking that uh, there's greater allegiance to the Pope than there is to the President. They're taking over. Uh, they're immigrants. They're the poor. We don't want them in our backyard. Even though Father McGivney's family was very poor and their lot was hard, their faith was very strong. And I think that's not only where Father McGivney uh, felt the first stirrings of a vocation, it's also the beginnings of a lifelong devotion to building up the family. At the age of 13, Michael completes his studies and expresses interest in the priesthood, but his father is hesitant. 
Michael instead takes a job at a local factory, making spoons. Finally, after a three-year wait, he gains permission and leaves home to study for the priesthood at St. Hyacinth's Seminary in Quebec. However, a tragic death derails his plans. When Father McGivney's dad died, all of a sudden, Michael McGivney had to move back from seminary and help support the rest of the family. And I think this was very formative for him. After helping his family adjust to life without the breadwinner, the Bishop of Hartford intervenes and arranges for Michael to complete his path to the priesthood. He is to finish his studies in Baltimore and become a parish priest. So Father McGivney was sent to Baltimore. He studied at St. Mary's Seminary. Father McGivney made a wonderful impression on his classmates and on the faculty. He was a diligent student. He had great strength of character. Uh, he liked to play baseball. He had a great capacity for friendship, which would serve him very well as a priest. On December 22, 1877, Michael McGivney is ordained in Baltimore by Archbishop James Gibbons and is appointed curate of St. Mary's Church in New Haven, Connecticut. For Michael, it is a Connecticut homecoming and also a mighty challenge. Well, St. Mary's Church had only been recently built and it had a massive debt. He was coming into a situation most priests would not want to enter into. And there was also a great resistance to Catholicism at that time. Uh, famously, there's an article in the New York Times from soon after St. Mary's was opened, uh, talking about the uh, monstrosity on Hill House Avenue, that in the midst of all of these beautiful mansions where all of the waspy uh, residents of, of New Haven lived. Irish immigrants were now flocking to their neighborhood, and so the residents here were, were not happy. Father McGivney sets about making St. Mary's Church a center of Catholic life. He gathers the men in the parish for baseball games. He organizes outings for youth and he makes the church the center of community life for families. Father McGivney's ministry focuses on the centrality of faith for his parishioners by living out the two great commandments, love of God and love of neighbor. Now these were not abstract commands for Father McGivney. They had to be put into practice. They had to change people's lives. Christianity's practical relevance was his priority. Everything Father McGivney did was aimed at strengthening the Catholic faith of his parishioners. McGivney reaches out to everyone, including the most despised. In one notable case, a 21-year-old named Chip Smith shoots and kills a police officer while drunk. He is tried for first-degree murder in 1881, convicted and sentenced to be hanged. Father McGivney was not a priest who simply stayed in the rectory. He was the great evangelizer. And so he reached out into this prison and became friends with Chip Smith. Father McGivney would go to the prison, and not just for a quick five-minute visit, but long, extended visits where he would speak to the man about faith, about God, about forgiveness, about responsibility, and so forth. It is said of Chip Smith that uh, prior to his execution, that he was beloved even by the guards. His personality was so transformed. His life was so transformed. The man who's responsible for that is Father McGivney. Father McGivney understands uniquely the plight of Catholic immigrants. Modern social safety nets do not yet exist. When a breadwinner dies, the consequences are catastrophic, bankruptcy, poverty, and families torn apart. The Downs family were a, a typical Irish immigrant family of the 19th century, very enterprising. They became the wealthiest and the most socially prominent Catholic, probably, in New Haven. 
And then, as so often happens, Edward Sr. dies. And the bottom drops out. If a woman was widowed, had children, if she could not prove that she had sufficient financial resources to care for her minor children, the state would take the children from her and place them in, in various institutional homes. And then even more on top of that, the children's Catholic faith would get no support whatsoever. So it was tragic on both a personal and on a faith level. It begins to look as though the Downs family is going to be broken up by the probate court in New Haven. And in this hour of need, who steps forward but their parish priest? Father McGivney appears to accept guardianship of the child. His intervention enabled young Alfred Downs to remain with his family and one day to go on to graduate from Yale Law School. This is a pivotal moment in the life of Father McGivney. He had lost his own father and had seen the financial and emotional cost to his own family. Now he is able to make a tremendous difference in the life of another family. He understood firsthand the need for the insurance program of the Knights of Columbus. In the fall of 1881, Father McGivney gathers two dozen men for a meeting in the basement of St. Mary's. He shares with them his vision of a Catholic fraternal group bound by the spiritual principles of charity and unity and named for Columbus the most celebrated Catholic figure at the time, and one whose name would help make the case that Catholics could be good American citizens as well. The Knights of Columbus is born. Christopher Columbus, at the time, was revered as the founder of America. Not only that, America was a Protestant nation. Columbus was a Catholic. So here you had this way of affirming their American identity, and that was an essential part of the Knights of Columbus from the very beginning. Charity, unity, and fraternity were not abstractions. These were principles that flowed from Father McGivney's life. They echoed the gospel and summed it up, and he was able to not only communicate them to those early Knights of Columbus, but to inculcate them in their lives and in their spirituality. Father McGivney had several goals in the foundation of the Knights. First and foremost was the protection of the spiritual welfare of his parishioners. The Catholic men of New Haven were being lured from the faith with the promises of social advancement and other benefits by anti-Catholic societies. What Father McGivney saw was that a Catholic group was needed to create a network of faithful men capable of strengthening rather than diminishing the faith of those who joined. Father McGivney saw the Knights as responding to threats to the faith of Catholics, as well as the means to protect their families spiritually and materially. Keeping the Catholic family together not only meant helping these families advance socially, it often meant keeping the Catholic family Catholic. Again, it was a very practical way of transmitting the faith, and therefore of evangelizing the next generation of Catholics. Father McGivney saw the Knights of Columbus as a community of brothers who were concerned for one another and who would be there to offer each other a helping hand. We're all familiar with the great religious orders, the Benedictines, Franciscans, Dominicans, and the Jesuits. These men have entered a brotherhood but what of the men who marry and must provide for their families? Men called to be active in their parish. What is the idea of a Christian brotherhood for them? Today, because of Father McGivney's vision, the Knights of Columbus offers men the opportunity to join a Catholic brotherhood based upon the principles of charity, unity, and fraternity. Father McGivney insists on lay leadership of the Knights but is fully dedicated to the order's growth and development. His priestly witness also inspires his brothers Patrick and John to follow his footsteps into the priesthood. In 1890, now serving as a priest in Thomaston, Connecticut, 
Father McGivney becomes ill during the pandemic of 1889 and 1890. The virus causes a serious case of pneumonia. Father Michael McGivney then dies on August 14, 1890, two days past his 38th birthday. So back in, in Father McGivney's day, it was very common for priests to die extremely young. It was a, a product of the priests being in the midst of uh, these immigrant communities where, again, the living conditions were difficult, where disease was common, and the priests were incredibly overworked. St. John Chrysostom said that a martyr dies once, but the pastor dies daily for his people. And this is especially true of Father McGivney. Father McGivney is, in so many ways, the perfect model of what a parish priest and who a parish priest should be. He was a man of deep prayer, um, but he was not a man who, you might say, hid behind the altar. He was constantly out among the people, and he loved to be with them. Of all of Pope Francis's beautiful expressions, the one that I love the most is to take on the smell of the sheep. To get out there and walk hand in hand with your people through thick and thin, through the good times, the bad times, the sorrows, the joys, the laughter and the tears. Father McGivney did that back then. Father McGivney understood the importance of the laity's vocation to transform society according to the gospel. The men who joined him in the Knights of Columbus took up this challenge to go into society and to make a difference by the very practical witness of charity, unity, and fraternity. St. John Paul II has said that the priest must be a bridge to Christ for his people. Father McGivney was just this sort of bridge. His pastoral concern attracted many to the Catholic Church, and he helped strengthen the faith of his parishioners against the challenges of his day. Pope Benedict XVI wrote that we need to cultivate a heart that sees where love is needed. Such a charitable heart was at the center of Father McGivney's life as a parish priest and as founder of the Knights of Columbus. We need that think of a remarkable accomplishment the exemplary American priest, the venerable Michael McGivney, whose vision and seal lead to the establishment of the Knights of Columbus. Was not this unity of vision and purpose rooted in facing the spirit of constant conversion and self-sacrifice, the secret of the impressive growth of the church in this country? We might ask, what is the secret of the impressive growth of the Knights of Columbus? And I think the secret is a simple one. The Knights of Columbus is an organization that transforms friends into brothers, brothers who are concerned and who care for one another. This was the spiritual genius of Father McGivney, not just to preach about the need for charity and unity, but to help us see our neighbor in need as a true brother or sister so that our charity becomes a fraternal charity and our unity becomes a fraternal unity. Oggi, i Cavalieri di Colombo proseguono la loro opera di carità evangelica e fraternità in vari settori. In questo modo il vostro ordine si dimostrò fedeli all'ideale del fondatore, il venerabile Michael Margivney, il quale fu ispirato dai principi della carità cristiana e della fraternità ad assistere i più bisognosi. When Pope Francis speaks of the importance of fraternity, or he tells priests to bring the gospel to the margins of society, I think of Father McGivney, his support for widows and orphans, and his concern for the poor and the suffering. Father McGivney's example calls us to see our unity as Catholics, to undertake the conversion needed to treat each other as brothers and sisters, and to make the self-sacrifice necessary to live a life of charity. We sometimes think of the heroic virtue of our saints as the achievement of a sort of spiritual superhero. 
but that's really not the case. Saintly, heroic virtue is really very different. It is an emptying of oneself so that the Lord can be seen working in and through the saint. What Father McGivney did in quietly living a life of charity and unity and calling all of us to look at each other as brothers and sisters has had an indelible effect on Catholicism in America and around the world. God writes the, the best stories, and we didn't realize what he was doing in our lives or what he was doing in the world when all this was going on. Only looking back on it did we see all of those things that lined up to bring us to this day, and we sit there with our mouth hanging open. Michael, he's always been a miracle to us. You know, we've always called him a miracle. But then there's a part of you that doesn't realize the gravity of the miracle. You can tell that God is, is a real player in their family. He's not a, a hobby. He's actually a person who lives in their house with them. I started with the Knights in 2005, and I decided I would look into being a Knights of Columbus insurance agent after reading Parish Priest, because I really felt like coming into this business I have to be an apostle of Father McGivney. Latching on to his mission and seeing how important it was that we take care of Catholic families. And that's when our family kind of started developing a devotion to Father McGivney. It was December 31st that we had the ultrasound that revealed the Down syndrome. We didn't have a problem with the Down syndrome at all. In fact, I told Michelle, I said, what a blessing for our children to be able to grow up around someone like that. We were advised that we probably needed to get some additional testing done. They shuffled us into a small room, pulled the ultrasound up on the screen, showing us how his body looked like it was completely full of fluid, like a little balloon. He said, well, this is gonna be terminal. He has fetal high drops diagnosis. You have basically two options. One would be to go ahead and terminate the pregnancy now or you can wait for him to die on his own and then we'll just induce a stillbirth labor. The day that I was given 0% chance of the baby surviving, I kneeled down and I told God, if you let him die, I will still love you, Lord. But it'll take me a while to forgive you. But I promise to still love you. I kind of just had an agony in the garden moment. I said, Father McGivney, if you will pray for him, then we will change his name, and I, I will name him after you. Every year, the Knights of Columbus puts on an incentive trip for their agents. So in January of 2014, it was announced that we were going with a pilgrimage to Fatima. So they had told me that they were there praying for the health of their baby, and that would probably require a miracle, so praying especially to Father Michael J. McGivney for that made perfect sense to me. Daniel and I asked all of our friends that were close to please pray through the intercession of Father McGivney on the day that we were in Fatima. I just kept thinking, Lord, let this baby be the miracle. If he's Father McGivney's miracle, then he will live. The reading of the day, it just hit us both pretty hard. Jesus says to the man that comes and asks him to, to heal his son, go forth, your son will live. And I just, I remember looking at Michelle with my mouth hanging open, you know, thinking, wow, how powerful is that? Physically, I felt like a veil was lifted. The brokenness in my heart was softened. Probably from the words, you may go in peace, your son will live. And then we came home, 
And I went to the appointment for the ultrasound to see where the baby was. She came in and read the ultrasound and everything looked like a normal Down syndrome baby. And that's when the doctor realized and had to flip through the charts and say, oh, I know who you are now. <laughs> she didn't realize from looking at the ultrasound that we were the family with high drops. That is the moment where you have to acknowledge that something has happened here that was miraculous. The doctor printed off one of the little sheets on the ultrasound. She said, look at this picture of this baby. This is the prettiest baby I have ever seen in my life. He was born on May 15th. And that is actually the day that Council One of the Knights of Columbus was founded. And then the first doctor who told me that Michael wouldn't live came in. And I never will forget, as long as I live, she said, Michelle, I never thought we would be here. It has been the honor of my life to deliver your little precious baby. I think there are times in your life you think you've seen a miracle. But when somebody tells you that you have, it's even more special. And he is a miracle in a lot of ways. But he came to the right family. I think Michael definitely has changed our family for the better. He's taught us how to love someone who doesn't have to earn your love. I think he's taught us how to help people who are helpless. And he's just brought so much joy to our family and everything that he does. I just walked downstairs one day and everyone was all screaming like, oh, it's approved. It's still mind blowing to me that the Pope approved it, that our God used our family in this way. Like I, I can't even comprehend all of the people that this could touch and help out, you know, and it's just really amazing. If there's a child that Father McGivney would want to help, this is the one. You know, he's the youngest of 13. Father McGivney was the oldest of 13. The Knights of Columbus is very deep into the movement of those with special needs. He's one of the most loving children I've ever seen. And he has true joy. He makes everyone feel loved. God wrote this story. God chooses the miracles. God chooses who is beatified. He chooses who is canonized. He wants Father McGivney to be honored, and so he shall be.